Today I'm going to be doing a do-it-yourself mod on a Hubson transmitter. We're going to be changing the double A's over to a LiPo. We're going to do that by opening the quads transmitter and we will remove the battery compartment and we will solder in a uh, butt converter for voltage regulation. You don't have to do that. We'll talk about that later. Um, so let's get started. Turn the transmitter over. Now this can be done on not just the H501S but multiple hubs and transmitters and you may find this to be we do it on a lot of different uh, controllers. Take the four screws out of the back. TV screen, the LCD screen, just drains any kind of alkaline battery. You can, of course, get lithiums, um, but you're going to spend a bunch. Uh, you can do rechargeables, but we're in the RCs. Um, we have a bunch of different lipos sitting around, different types of rechargeables. So why not utilize some of that to power our transmitters? So once you get the four screws out, just peel the back off. Reach out right. Now this side is a 5.4 gigahertz. This side is 2.4. The 5.4 is for video only in the Hubson. The other 2.4 is for your telemetry and controlling of the quadcopter. Now this is the 5.4 gigahertz antenna. This is the Omni 2.4 gigahertz. Down here we have our GPS. And, uh, okay, so what we're going to do now, um, looking at the back of the board, we have 4 to 13 volts as stated. So we could actually, because it's 13 volts, a lot of 7.4 volt LiPos or 11 volt LIFOs we can use um, up to 13 volts. Now keep in mind that is okay to go direct. I will be using a butt converter and the only reason I use a butt converter is because I can crank my voltage down closer to the 6 volts. Um, the reason I do that is because the only way to get rid of voltage in something that doesn't need it is for it to put it off in heat. So it's going to use all that extra volts and put it off in energy as of heat. So I'm going to keep my system a little bit cool, my board's a little bit cooler by keeping the voltage down, and I'm going to regulate that at the butt converter. Okay, so I'm going to be using a butt converter, and I got mine from Odd Wires. Um, this is just a 5 amp. Uh, we can do anything up to 36 volts, I believe, with this one. Um, so, now you have to put higher volts in than what you're trying to get out, of course, guys. Um, and I'm going to be giving it uh, 7.4 volts. Now, I like to use these. They have an LCD readout. It gives me the input voltage, and it gives me the output voltage, whatever I set it to. Um, and I can simply get to that by turning in the screen on and off here, and then going through the input and output with this button. So once we get it powered up, we'll be able to see that. Um, now, like I said, you don't have to have a butt converter. But the butt converters come in handy for the fact that it keeps um, you from having to put all the bolts straight to the board. You can regulate it. Now these run about seven dollars, eight dollars. 
um, and it's at oddwires.com it's uh, SKU is CHP 0004015 now these are models XL4015 so if you do a Google search for XL4015 you're gonna find Banggood has these as well for about without the LCD screen for about 250 or less um, you can also find them all over online so you can get them with LCD without and then there's all kinds of different models um, I still check just a FYI I do check the voltage output with my fluke meter because a lot of times this is off about a half a volt to one volt and so I make a note of that and just write it on the back and I've done that here I have already tested them this one's off as I marked um, it's off 0.5 volts so if I were to mark it here at 6 um, I would actually be at about six and a half on the mark so I need to make the adjustment on the pot okay now this battery compartment can be removed and I actually own a second transmitter and I've already done a mod on it and this is the battery compartment removed now this has a center I've already, I removed that at the beginning um, I didn't see a real need for it even with the batteries in there, it just got in my way. Um, but you can remove this very easy. See there's a couple clips here, and those are down here. And if you slide something flat, or a guitar pick, or maybe a flat screwdriver, a, a butter knife, then you can unclip this and pull this whole entire box out. And that will allow you to, to have a lot larger section for your batteries. So you can put a high milliamp hour battery in there. And I use 2700, or um, not 2700, I'm sorry, 1500 milliamp hours on average. And I will get three or four days, which gives me anywhere on average I get about 12 flights um, if the weather's permitting. So I guess I would 12 to 15 flights before I change batteries. That's really good with a big LCD. So let's try to pop this one out. I don't think it would hurt anything. Um, we're going to make our connection here. Now for people that can't do any soldering, um, why don't you look to maybe do a quick splice. You can do away with the box, cut your wire, leave some of it onto the board, and then maybe use a quick splice that you get, um, a low voltage quick splice that you might get uh, from um, a hardware store or an automotive store and that way you can do a, a crimp type splice, a butt splice and that way you don't have to do any soldering when you want to add um, a connector you know, one, a connector for your batteries so you'd be able to plug it in just by using these old wires and you never even had to touch the solder so anybody can do this if you just use your imagination okay, okay well let's go ahead and try to pull out this battery compartment so I can give you an idea how to do it. So we're going to use this tool. Um, you can also, like I said, use a guitar pick, some business cards. So slide down, push straight down in the middle. See how this is. So you push straight down, put a little of that leverage out towards the inside. You might have to grab here and pull up at the same time. That one popped up pretty easily. Go over here and do this side. These are tough, so don't give up. Put you and same thing. So pull up at the same time you're pushing in on those two tabs. You will also have some hot glue down here that you need to break free, and it's more of a pulling up on that box. So this gets glued, and you want to break that glue off or force this. I don't have this con really get in the way but you I did notice there is a tab um, you might want to push in on that and once you get those other two it seems to come out let's see if I yeah okay see? real easy okay so I'm not going to cut that off immediately now if you were not going to do the soldering you would do the cuts on the wires somewhere um, to be able to do the splice for your new connector for attaching a battery
Now I'm not going to take the time to solder this on and off. You guys can figure that out on your own. I'm not going to pull the board. I'm going to do it from this side. Um, I do want to make reference. I have pulled this and reattached these um, to do some testing, but these are connected on the other side normally. Sorry to not mention that ahead of time. Um, so these connectors do not connect on the back, but we will be attaching for easeability. I will attach my wires to the back side just like I did these leads. So I will actually get some different wire. I will attach that to a connect, make, put a connector on the end, um, whichever battery types I like, and then I will put my battery in there. And there's plenty of room. even the way it sits. Now, I like to go in and remove all of this, and you can do that with a couple of little sharp tools, some, some um, something like uh, wire cutters to get you started, and most of this will all just pop out real easy just by bending and clipping and using some pliers. Um, and that gives you a whole lot of space here to add your batteries. You can run your wires in through this edge here, and uh, it's real easy. I'm going to show you another one I've already completed. Um, I'm, and I'll show you how all of that works. So like I said, I'm not going to do the soldering on camera. I will though show you how I use the butt converter. Um, battery mod and antenna mod H501S transmitter. Now, Well, you remove the screws here. Put them over here. Now, there's the butt connector installed. Now, I installed it here in the back hatch area. I just slide my little batteries in. These are 1500 milliamps. I can use a combination of those and some others that are similar in size. You can also slide them up in this further edge after taking out some of the plastics we talked about. Now, as you look inside, I have already done all the soldering on this. I have hot glued the, the uh, board to the back plate of the old battery box slot. So you see that? Alright, this is my input. Okay. And you can make any connector you want to go to any type of battery. Some are using the Hubson OEM batteries um, so they'll put their own connector for that on there. But you can use whatever you like. The output just needs to be a good quality wire and needs to be either soldered, which is recommended, or spliced to the old battery boxes uh, wire with a good connection so that uh, uh, well it works. So on from there, if you look here, there's the LCD screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and you'll be able to see that come on. Um, I'm also going to be adding on this controller a dead switch um, on the hot side between um, I gotta replace that so the uh, there's an LED that's on all the time now that's why I'm gonna put a switch so that I don't over drain over discharge these batteries uh, that can start a fire just as well as heat or overcharging so the LCD to turn it on you hit the left button here and that shows as long as the red LED is on this side it's the input as long as the red LED is on this side it's the output and you switch that by hitting this button and that's the output I have output of 6.1 volts remember this has a half a volt that is uh, a little off on the on the readout of the LCD here um, via my flute meter testing out on this uh, output side uh, so I've adjusted for that and whatever my input voltage is, this battery needs charge. I have been flying today. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you a little bit on how you adjust that. When you first buy these, these are set for 36 volts or quite high up there. Now, you're going to spin this little screw here. And if you screw to the right, it's going to increase the voltage. Oh, let me change that over. 
sure you have it on the right side output. And if you turn it left, counterclockwise, it will decrease the voltage coming out. Now, increasing doesn't take much when you finally get there, but you may have to spin this a lot counterclockwise, like I said, when the default from shipping gets to you from the manufacturer. So just turn it. And I, like I said, I like to put a fluke meter on this side so I can actually see the true voltage. This is nice for a quick readout, and it lets me know when I'm out in the field. I can look and see what batteries are doing. And that also lets me, if I am using the same connector, I can use that as a voltmeter to test other batteries. Alright, so let's power it on. There you have it, guys. Full bars. Even though we're even kind of running low on the LiPo. Everything's working. Alright, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, I know how to do it.